Christian, can you tell me um, about the practice of intercession in this relationship to self-emptying love and joy? So in, in, my, in my youth group back home, the way that we end our, like our last 20 minutes of youth group is simply by sitting around in a circle and sharing the various things that are going on in our lives. Uh, we'll, ask the, you know, we'll ask the youth what, what they might be, have happening, and it might be like a test or uh, something like, you know, my dad is really not around all that often and he's really hard to connect with. Uh, and so as they share these things that are going on, we'll then turn to the other kids and say, okay, well, who wants to pray for Sarah, right? And the question is, is not, does anybody want to pray for Sarah, right? Because if you ask that question, it's like asking a kid, do they want to clean their room? Right. No, they don't want to clean their room. The question is not that. It's when are you going to clean your room? Who is going to pray for Sarah? Somebody's going to pray and we're going to wait until somebody volunteers. Uh, because the idea, right, is that we're trying to, trying to train young people as well as ourselves how to empty themselves enough to stand in someone else's place, mm -hmm. to stand in the places. Because the reality is sometimes we can't pray for ourselves. Sometimes we can't, I don't have the words to bring to God about my, my dad who's not around because every time I try to say something, like the prayer gets stuck in my throat and it can't, it can't make it out, so I need somebody to do my praying for me. Mm -hmm. And so that the idea of intercession becomes this, well, don't worry, you sit there, I'll do your praying for you. I'll pray for you. I will stand in your place as your representative and be the one who goes to God and gives you your word. And the only real response to that can be both for the one doing the praying as well as the one being prayed for is this, this life of, 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 of it's, a, it's, a, it's an ecstatic expression of love, right? This way of both people leaving themselves. The one on the other hand needs to make enough room for the, for the intercessor to do the praying for them. And the one doing the praying needs to rid themselves of their ego enough to be able to feel awkward saying, hey, you know, Lord, we're praying for Sarah and we just wish that you would uh, act to do something. We don't know what you're going to do, but we trust that you're going to do something. Because that itself becomes this really humble act, right? So often we think of prayer as like this last resort for people or mm -hmm. this way of kind of religiously getting out of a conversation that makes us uncomfortable. So if someone's like, oh, you know, my dad's not around, we go, like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll pray for you. You know, but that's not really self-emptying love. That's very selfish and like using religion as a shield. But this becomes a way of saying, okay, well, I actually have nothing to say to you about the fact that your dad's not around. But God can do something. So why don't we stop pretending that we have all the answers and instead go right to the source? Instead go right to God and say, hey, we're, you know, God, we're here before you trusting that you can act in this place that we cannot. You can do something with what we cannot do anything with. Uh, and so instead of seeing prayer as this last resort, maybe the job is for, of the youth worker is to see it as a first resort, to see it as this thing that we do with one another as just part of what it means to be Christians, is to do Christian things with one another and for one another. Um, and, and again, the only real response to uh, someone praying for you and to you praying for somebody can be one of gratitude, one of, of joy, of, of feeling felt, you know, of, of knowing that somebody is there with you while you're sitting in, in the dark w wondering about these questions to have somebody else come and stand alongside you and say, hey, you're, you're not going to be defeated by this. I'm, we're, we, we have a God whose love is stronger than death, right? And again, it's this way of understanding that uh, it is a life that can't be touched by death because it is one that is entered through death, whether it's the death of the ego uh, in confessing the need to be prayed for or in being the one who does the praying. Uh, it really is this, this journey of self-emptying love and participation in one another's life. Uh, and the only response to that, I think, is gratitude and joy.